Toby's got a flat tire and I got no brakes. So we're gonna need a jump pack, which we stupidly didn't bring. Stop, stop. This one's got an even grubbier start button. Oh. It does say restricted performance, but it's definitely in limp mode. It's not very easy to get your bloody head in there. Oh, it goes straight to adult. <laughs> Okay, before we get into the video, I just want to do a massive shout out to today's video sponsor, which is Vehicle Score. And I'm going to do a quick check on one of the Range Rovers that we're buying. So the registration for this one is Yankee Lima 64 Lima Yankee X-Ray. This is going to give us a score from 1 to 999 based on its MIT mileage, age and history. And luckily for us, this one says it is amazing. 891 out of 999, which is 219 above average, tells us it's nine years old. The most recent mileage recorded, MIT comments is good, uh, yearly mileage is good, and there's loads and loads of other information on here. I always like checking out vehicle performance, so we can tap to reveal that as long as we're logged in. We've got 302 brake horsepower, 0 to 60 in 7.1 seconds, which is Disgusting in a vehicle of that size, it's ridiculous. Uh, and 12 months tax is £385. It's actually not too bad for something like that. We can go through our MOT history, we've got future value estimator, and our AI mechanics. So if I say my car is smoking, we can ask the question and it will give us loads of things that we can check that we can check out before we take it to a garage and spend money. But most importantly, if you were gonna hand over your hard-earned cash to buy a car, they offer some of the best checks in the market. So we've got the salvage report, which is £2.97, the ultimate report, £8.97. The one I recommend is Ultimate Plus for £11.97. Use my code SHIFTINGMETAL20, you'll get 20% off making this just around about £9.50. It gives you all of these checks, gives you ultimate peace of mind. You've even got £10,000 worth of data guarantee to make sure that you're not buying a complete lemon without knowing about it and that you've got something to give you all the information you need when it comes to buying this car. So head to vehiclescore.co.uk for those and make sure your money's safe when you're spending it on a used car. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well. Today you join me in the back of a very bouncy and very, to be quite honest, cramped Navara. We are on our way to collect some cars that I recently bought. I actually bought three Range Rover Sports in the same sitting unseen at BCA auction and they are all in Birmingham just to add insult to injury so we got me Toby and Macaulay all in the Navara uh, Macaulay's got the trailer on the back of the truck he's going to drop Toby and I at BCA Perry Bar to pick up two of them and he's going to go on and pick up another one from BCA Walsall let me show you what we bought Got a nice little red one. I actually quite fancy this for myself. It's only ten thousand eight hundred pounds on seventy nine thousand miles. Uh, that was about eleven $1 hundred quid under cap clean. It looks to be quite a nice thing, really. Then the next most expensive one we got was thirteen thousand seven hundred pounds. It's like a dark blue, purpley type of colour. That's on fifty one thousand miles, and I paid over cap clean for that one by about five hundred pounds. But there's still a load of profit in that. And the nicest looking one of them all is this 65 plate uh, three litre but it's a hybrid i believe diesel hybrid system uh, that one's on 64 and a half thousand miles cap clean was 18,950. so we've got that about a thousand pounds under cap price we are going to go and pick them up and get them back and just pray that they are all okay so we're on the road we're going to pick them up we'll show you them as we grab them and then we'll perhaps make a comparison of all of them Let's go. Coaches, where's, where's Just go right, just turn right down this lane here. 
Oh no. And we'll just tuck up in the corner. Scoot it in there. Looks like one of these big rigs. Not sure. Oh, I'll pop here then. No, we've got a million miles away from the bloody thing. Oh, which way's closer? Over there? Ahead of us. Uh, Alright. And then I'll swing a switch over and park up next to this. You can never understand anyone who does that. So, it's all going. <laughs> much, much, much later. This car park is interesting. I'm hoping there's room for me to spin around. Right, so apparently we're lane one. Oh yeah, collection point one. So we're on this row up here somewhere. I can't see anything that looks like a Range Rover Sport and it's raining, but I guess we'll find out. Right, Toby's in the blue one. Got a bit of a flat tire. I'll have to figure that out, but it did start okay. And I am gonna be driving the 65 plate one. Look how nice that looks. Now, what's not so nice about this, don't drive, no brakes. Uh, that's no good if we are gonna go two hours home with this thing. Uh, so Toby's got a flat tire and I got no brakes, supposedly. Let's check it out. Right, so the problem we've got, well, it's absolutely lovely in here, is A, we seem to have a flat battery, which it's saying on the dash. Low battery, please start engine. Nah, it's just not doing it now. So we're gonna need a jump pack, uh, which we stupidly didn't bring. Should have brought the top on. Um, and it's also saying brake fluid low. So maybe, I mean, there's not much of a pedal there. There is some pedal, but not enough. Um, so it could have a, a blown uh, hose or something. Uh, so we have to get McCauley to come back and grab us. And luckily we've got a tire pump, so we can pump that up. And then we'll have to drive the other one back, hopefully. But luckily, we've got these battery packs, which hopefully will sort us out. central report so I'm sure there was an assure report on this and I don't remember there being anything about brakes but it does say brake fluid level warning on there and whatever so obviously I didn't pay much attention to I didn't realize it meant that it you know it didn't exactly put a picture of don't drive no brakes right let's find out exactly how bad the brakes are we got in the car park luckily I've got my little pump on me so we can pump your tire up and then we'll have to get a lift with Macaulay over to uh, Wolf's Hall. It does have brakes, but it is low on fluid. We could potentially get some, but it's probably not the safest idea in the world, is it? To drive to our home without checking that over. Oh.
The only thing you could do is, is it still running? No. If it'll start again, lower it into like access mode so it'd be a bit lower. I think, I think it'll be fine. I'll do it. To the other one. Do you have the other key then? Or sorry? The other key? I put them both in the packet. Oh, amazing. Perfect. Well done. Right. Best of luck. See you back. Right. So, we've got one. I'm going to try and get some more air the petrol station here. Do we need fuel? No, we've got half a tank. After 100 yards, turn left. Not sure how we're gonna turn that off because it doesn't even know where we're going because unfortunately everything is in Greek. I think that's Greek. Toby thought it was Arabic, but I'm fairly certain that's Greek. Is there even an air pump at this? Oh, air and water here. Yes. The swing they all go around. Turn left. I need to turn that off. Pound for air these days. Got very firm like sides, maybe they're pumped up with these seats. Right, so that's two Range Rover Sports picked up. One of which obviously needs some work. This one needed some air. Isn't it weird? You've got like home, you've got great hits. I guess that's the stuff that's coming from satellite, whatever, but the rest is in Greek. We've got some hula hoops and we've got some Mars bars. So we are sorted. Shout out to carsalehouse.co.uk down here in Birmingham Arms. We just passed you, if you're watching. If you are, get in the comments, say hello. Drugs impair your driving, Toby. Um, right, I just driven past it once. There was a big sign that says car auction next, but look at the place. What a dive. <laughs> I was just saying, I think we've been spoiled by being next door to BCA Bridgewater, which is quite a substantial, I guess, modern-ish site. In comparison to this, what a dump. So, now we've got to figure out, I guess it's gonna be in there. We've got a QR code. Whatever. Here we got another Ranger. We've got to hope that this one doesn't have an absolute ton of faults. Is that actually a disabled bay? Um, lots of abandoned vehicles, it would seem, with tickets on them. This looks like an old college or something, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, we've got to hope this one isn't foobard because we've got to drive it home. If otherwise, we've driven all the way from Perry Bar to Walsall for no reason whatsoever, because we'll have to leave it here for Macquarie to pick up on another day. I haven't seen that very often. Loading them with some proper sketchy ramps into the back of a curtain side lorry. That's your Shipley quote right there. Well, that's reception, so I will park back here. That's a very gunky stop start button. It's gross. This one's got an even grubbier start button. Maybe we got a bit of a squeaky bell. Oh, it does say restricted performance. But also fuel level low. Let's get it out and we will do a little diagnostic scan on it and see uh, what's coming up. We need to figure out how we unlock the uh, air smudger. Hiya! Thank you. Thank you very much. That's it. Brilliant. Genius. <laughs> Carrying this with me everywhere now, the OBD11 diagnostics tool. Because on some vehicles you can code certain things in, but more importantly, for a situation like this, we just want to figure out what's going on with this, whether it's sensible or not to actually drive this on. We've 
got a basic OBD diagnostic tool that connects to your phone that will let us know our fault codes and clear them. It's definitely a lot more grubby in this one, isn't it? So it's detecting the vehicle, now it's reading the control units. Hopefully we can find out why this car's not very happy. So according to OBD11, we don't actually have any codes in here, which would make sense because we don't have any engine management lights on. We've just got that restricted performance warning on the dashboard, which may well have gone now. Could that be to do with the fact that it's low on fuel? I think we're gonna chance it. I'll drive this one. I'll keep my OBD connected just in case I need to use it. See how we get on. Right, it's telling me Two hours, 13 minutes to get back, which is quarter past five, which is quarter of an hour after everyone else will have gone home. That's assuming this thing makes it. So of three Range Rover Sports bought, two, sorry, one seems decent, two need some work. Not a shocker, I suppose. Needs to be pulling away okay. I can't express how grubby, sticky and disgusting these buttons are. Right, fuel. Going in Sainsbury's for fuel. Right, so we have had restricted performance come up. Um, which I can't clear with the OBD11 because I guess, I don't know, it's, it's only basic diagnostics. Still able to do motorway speeds. And I'm sure if we pull off and stop and turn this on again, it'll be okay. But there is something going on. It could be something as simple as like the mass airflow uh, sensor or something like that. But could be in for a long drive because if I put this in cruise control, the speed just drops off. It just can't maintain speed the way it should do uh, if it was performing normally. So I've let Toby know over the radio, the walkie talkies, to. Uh, not bomb off ahead because worst comes to worst we'll have to stop and leave this somewhere and I will get in with him but now he's in front or I'm just about to overtake him but uh, yeah he slowed down probably a bit too much if I lose my momentum it's harder to get going again um, it still does reasonable speeds but it's definitely in limp mode so uh, I think next time we spot services, I'll grab some food and I reckon turning it off will probably put it back to normal again for a bit. I'm doing 70 at the moment, so it's not awful. And we've got services in one mile. Frankly, frankly services on the M5. Oh, this services looks rubbish. Oh, they've got a Burger King. All right, I'll take it back. All right, let's turn it off. Back on again and see if we clear. Red, no, it's still in restricted. Frustrating. the next day. Morning. How was the rest of your drive? Yeah, that's all right. Right, so all three Range Rovers are back. It's the next day. Um, all have got some things they need looking at, so. Let's have a little look around, see what we got, and try and do a few little things. See, see what we're working with. So this is the 65 plate, the one with no brakes, don't drive. Which, on the whole, is definitely the nicest one. It looks very nice. It's the most modern as well, and it is the hybrid-y one. Oh, the steps come out, look. Being the autobiography, I guess that was a, a spec thing. They're really nice in here, pan roof. Got the nice Alcantara headlining, stuff like that. 64, just under 65,000 miles. 
I would have liked to have driven this one back. I mean, my one was fine, um, other than a couple of things we'll get into. But this is the one that needs brake fluid. And I did pop the bonnet, take the little cover off, and it was low, but not out. Dan's had a look and he says that it looks like the pads are really, really low. So that one needs sorting out. But I do want to just see if putting some fluid in uh, sorts that out. I mean, I probably should leave it for the workshop, but we'll put some in anyway. Just, you know, it's going to need all bleeding up and whatever anyway. Battery is flat on this as well, wasn't it? Thinking about it. But I guess they've started it all right this morning. So it's under here. It took me a little bit standing there in the rain trying to figure out where it is. Take these little trim clip things out. Here is our reservoir, which you can see does have fluid in, but it is below the minimum. I guess we can potentially assume that's because the pads have traveled so far that it's used up the fluid. So just for the sake of getting the light off and making it have a decent brake pedal for now, until we do the brake pads, which will be imminently, um, we can just put some in just to, just, you know, check it out. Right, it's dot four it needs in here. Apparently, I checked up. Taking quite a lot. I don't know if that line I'm looking at is actually moving or if that's just an old stain line. It's not very easy to get your bloody head in there. That might just be enough, you know. Right, let's fire it up and see what it's saying about brake fluid. Hopefully, nothing. This is also the cleaning stuff of three. Right, tyre pressure monitoring set for light load. Ignition on. No other warnings, so... Brake pedal still feels a bit janky, to be honest. But it might be getting better. Obviously it's gonna need bleeding through. And Oh no, it does still say brake fluid low, actually. Now that I've pumped it, I guess. I probably pumped some in, so I'm not gonna do any more because we might start pumping air in or whatever, but yeah, mechanically, I think it just wants brake sorting out. I think it would be okay. I don't think there's actually like a leak or anything. Originally I thought there was, but I think it just needs the brakes changing. Um, and then we've got a really, really nice car. Um, in fact, there's a few additional things on this which we haven't got on the other ones. Well, A, for a start, these buttons are a dream. You wait till you see the one that I drove back. The disgusting state of the buttons on that. But secondly, have a look in the back here. We've got screens. And I don't know how you make them operate, but you've got these nice little Alcantara bags. Suede or something. With a Range Rover headphones, push to change channel. I wonder if this is the one we need to keep when we're going off to like auction stuff. You can drive in front, Toby. I'll sit in the back and watch TV. There's three sets of headphones. Oh, I suppose there could be three passengers in the back watching stuff. Very nice. About like, oh, little center armrest, which its sticky little center has fallen out of. All right. This probably won't work. Uh, oh, so that's, you can choose which one. Yes. Or you can, uh, route guidance not started. All right, well, it looks like you could have navigation up there. So I could be sat in the back with navigation on that screen, a DVD on here, TV, no reception. Oh, it goes straight to adult. <laughs> What's been going on here? I feel like I need to clean my hands now, immediately. It could be that that's like the highest channel number or whoever owned this was sat in the back watching, look at that. I'm watching BBC One in the back of my Range Rover Sport. It's actually a nice display as well. I mean, that's rubbish, but the fact that it's kind of jittering and whatever, but we are in a bit of a black hole of signal here for anything. But how cool is that? Feeling like I might have to keep this one. I won't, but you know, I feel like it. Um, right, so let's turn it all off. Put our remote back in its lovely little holder in here. Close that down. We've got our vent controls back here as well, as well as our heated, and I guess we'd have cooled seats back here. So it's like quad zone climate control. If I can figure it out, which I can't. Looks like we can have heated, Maybe not cooled. Heated rear seats, not cooled. But still, pumping away with your Meridian sounds, whatever. So the f so far, this is definitely my favorite one. No tow bar on this one, I don't think. Which would be handy. 
some nice genuine Range Rover mats which look in pretty good condition to be fair very nice and plush even the driver's one well that could be a passenger one actually I can never tell yeah I think I think the driver one has this tiny little baby one but still they are well worth putting back in I think and we have got the uh, load liner parcel shell thing which I'm not sure all of them have got Right, so next up, we've got a key for the blue one, which actually you can see in the sun here is going to be a very nice metallic blue, but obviously none of them have been balloted or anything like that. That's why they've all still got their auction markings on. This is the one that I drove back. We'll look at that last. This Toby drove back. This one, other than having a flat tyre originally, let's have a quick look, see what it's like now. It stayed up. Might want new tyres, I don't know. I haven't really looked into it, but drove pretty faultlessly, didn't it? Toby's giving me a nod. So this one was pretty good. What was interesting about this one? Oh, it's got um, some very questionable like aftermarket bits, hasn't it, on it? Carbon fiber surrounds for your seat base. So this fits on there, like that. Because of course that's the look you want in your Range Rover Sport. Strange choice. So this one was on 51,000 miles. It's pretty clean, actually, um, inside and out, really. It's not going to take a huge amount of work to get that sorted. No TVs in this one, sadly. This one is not an autobiography, but the orange one is. So two of them are autobiographies. This one isn't. So none of that fancy stuff in the back. I wonder what the centre armrest is like. Rubbish. Absolutely rubbish in comparison to the other one. I mean, it would do its job, but... Um, so, yeah, this one's pretty good, to be fair. Jason's already started coming out here and doing his like admin work, getting prices in the windows, getting all the documents together and all that sort of stuff. So that's that one. We've got Mike the Dent Man here from NW Dents. He's got the key for this one, so I'm gonna have to go and grab that off of him. Now this one is the one I think could potentially be the most problematic. It was also the one that I thought, oh, it's so cheap. What did I pay for it? Like 11, maybe-ish thousand. Um, that it would really suit me down. They do have a really nice metallic paint on them. Um, I kind of do fancy one of these for myself because I feel like it would just be a great all-rounder car for me. I've got three dogs now for my sins. Um, and Sophie and everything else. And it's like a good kind of like utility vehicle, wasn't it? But like we said, we've got a couple of problems. So we've only got one key. We've got no service history with this one. Um, I feel like the carbon fiber surrounds off the other one should come in here because this one's got like a well it's not a carbon fiber it's like a polished kind of metal look I mean they are it's like plasticky and whatever but it would fit in here better I think um, this one when we first started it up it came up with something saying restricted performance uh, it cleared itself again and then when I put my foot down heavy going along at one point in the motorway came up with restricted performance again put it into a bit of a limp mode but once we stopped for food, turned it off again, started again, it was all right. Then bringing it in this morning, it came up with like body stability problems, whatever. So, you know, I don't think any of these things are drastic. It's probably something like an air, mass airflow meter or something, or, or I don't know. We're going to have to plug it in and find out. It could be um, solenoids on the turbo, I think, on these that kind of throw up that random restricted performance type issue. Um... And the suspension thing probably wants some like hydraulic fluid. That tends to be um, what they need from my experience of the older generation of Range Rover Sport that I had. But this one was marked as a grade four. So like the worst condition of the lot, but actually I don't think it's too bad. I think this would clean up really nice inside. In fact, maybe that's why they have marked it grade four, because if you look inside, there's just some things that make you think maybe someone like Dom could sort this out. The staining around stuff it's just weird it looks like it's been a smoker's car but it doesn't smell of smoke in here but if toby comes in and just looks at like all this cream leather bits it's all just grimy and disgusting look at the buttons it's like someone smeared a toddler's nappy contents on it it is grim and then up here on the dashboard this is all full of something i don't know if someone's like splashed a coffee but it's all stuck in the vents and grimy and disgusting but otherwise, not too bad for a car that's on 80,000 miles and is 
mm, 10, 11 years old. It's got cruise control, heated seats, heated and cooled seats, um, a heated steering wheel, I should say. It's got adaptive cruise control. So I was cruising all the way back, just set the speed that you want. And if you hit traffic, it slows down for you and keeps you at a reasonable distance. I know that's probably very like basic for most people, but that blows my mind. That's like the most advanced technology I've ever had in a car or would have in a car if I had it for myself. Got the really nice panoramic roof as well. Um, yeah, I mean, it will clean up to be a really, really nice thing. Uh, and if we do sell it, I think we've got it up for 18 and a half thousand pounds. So there would be a decent profit in it as well. Let's uh, see if we've got any warnings on it when we turn it on now. There is a red warning triangle on the dashboard, but I'm not sure it necessarily tells me what for. Ignition on, it's saying. Uh, and the door is open. Whether that will go away with that? I think it stays on, so it's definitely going to want a bit of diagnosis, but I don't think it's got too much wrong with it. I didn't check the other ones, actually, but this one has got a fridge uh, in the armrest, which is a favourite feature of mine. I can't remember if the other ones did or not, but they might well have done. But yeah, this one just wants a seriously good clean, get all these buttons and everything, and it would look really nice. Best score though is our Northumberland County Council parking timer. So you can, you know, if you happen to be in Northumberland, I suppose you could use it anywhere, you can tell them what time you arrived. So like 10 o'clock. Leave that on the dashboard there and you wouldn't get a ticket, hopefully. Let's have a quick look in the back of this one, see if it's got more features than the blue one being the autobiography. So yes, so this has got the nice center armrest as well. I wasn't sure if that was age related, but it seems like if you have an autobiography, you get maybe a slightly different interior, therefore you get a different armrest. I'm not sure, I'm not an expert. This one doesn't have the remote, obviously, because we haven't got TVs, but we have got our climate control and our heated seat controls in here as well. So this would be a lovely thing to get chauffeured around in. Not as nice as that one out there with the TV screens and everything, but still, Pretty damn nice. I imagine if my dad sees that one with the TV screens in, he's gonna want that. He's gonna chop in his other one. I won't blame him because it is definitely nicer, but anything with TV screens and remotes and stuff, it's right up his street. And that having TV is one thing that he misses probably in his Range Rover Sport now versus the L322 that he used to have because he could sit outside Tesco while my stepmom would go in and do the shopping and he could, you know, watch Bargain Hunt or something tragic like that. So, yeah. That's it, there's our three cars we bought. They've all got minor bits and pieces to be sorted out. This one potentially could be the most problematic, but actually I think they're all, on the whole, actually not bad um, purchases. This one, I forgot, also makes some knocking noises on the front, so I think it's gonna want some lower arms. And a bit. This one's gonna need, you know, maybe a grand or two thrown at it, but still, there'll be a decent profit margin in it and it will sell really, really quickly if I don't decide to keep it. Let me know in the comments what you think, whether I should keep this for myself look for another one. I don't think it's too bad. It's quite a nice car, really. Only 8,000 miles, so we can sort out a few little issues. Could be a winner. Right, so that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. If you're one of my subscribers, when we hit 75,000, I'm giving away a free Tag Heuer watch worth 2,000 pounds. And if you want to get your hands on a Tag Heuer watch without having to subscribe or wait until we hit 75,000 subscribers, check out my raffle website, feelgoodcompetitions.com, where we are raffling off cars, watches, uh, holiday vouchers, and cash, all in aid of helping raise money for really good charitable causes. That's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.